Cheerio, bonjour, allo. Okay, today, Pamela Smart. Uh, remember that most of you are around 35 or so. I'm 52 and I watched this case. You remember that Betty Broderick was the murder that got me interested in murder. They ran a story about she and her husband and they ran it in the Washington Post magazine that comes on Sundays. And I was about 18 or 19 and oh my goodness, I was fascinated. From that point on, I started searching out true crime. Well, most of you weren't alive at this point uh, or you were just toddlers in diapers. Pam Smart was a huge thing. It was on every news story. It was on the, the headline page of the Washington Post. And this is a murder in Derry, New Hampshire. You know, a little, little teeny town. Uh, but it was big time. It happened 1990, May of 1990. So Pam is three years older than I am. And so you have a connection. You're watching people and you think, oh my goodness, this person is the same age as I am. What the fuck are they thinking? She, Pam Smart was brilliant. Very, very smart girl. She went to Florida State, graduated in three years, worked a couple jobs the entire time, graduated with no student debt. I won't get political. She's not asking anyone to release her student debt. Uh, smart, smart girl. She loved the, uh, what's it called? Oh, the hair band, the long hair, the Van Halen. Got it bad, got it bad, got it bad. I'm hot for teacher. See, that's what's sad is most of you are watching that and you weren't even alive when that song came out. Uh, so she meets Greg, her husband. He's got long, long curly hair and oh my goodness, she loves it. Uh, they date, he moves to Florida while she's finishing school. They go back to Derry, New Hampshire and they get married and life is great. Uh, she's a college graduate. Greg is now working for his father and his insurance agency. I assume he's got his insurance licenses and things. He's making money. But in order to get that job at the insurance agency, Greg had to cut his hair and had to make himself, oh, look, if I were trans, this is what I'd look like, uh, make himself look professional. And Pam didn't like that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. But that wasn't the catalyst. Greg had an affair. He had a one night stand. And I, I say he stupidly admitted it. I don't, I, I don't know. That's not in my mind sight. I, I would not have a one night stand. It, so give me your comments. But I feel like if somebody messes up once, take that mistake, tuck it under the covers and move on. But again, I, I'm just not that kind of person. I, I, I'm in a relationship. There's nothing else. I, so that is not my mindset. But so Greg cheated on her. He admitted it. And from that point, she just felt insecure. And I mean, as a woman, I, I get that. I've never been in a relationship where a man left me for another woman or they had it or they cheated, or at least as far as I know. Uh, but I got to imagine that that hurts your pride and your self-esteem. It doesn't matter what the woman looks like. It's why would he want her and not me? But he admitted it. He was a real man. He owned it. He took responsibility. And that's my logic in life. Take responsibility and life is so much easier. But she was bothered by that. <laughs> so Pam finally, Pam wants to be a television journalist, but she finds a job out of high school as the media coordinator. Close enough. I get it. She's making an income, probably about 36000 a year. Well, in 1990, that wasn't terrible, but she also wasn't paying $5 a gallon for gas. Um, anyway, so she starts hooking up. Uh, the kids who are in, so she has a, a media class and what's it, an extracurricular activity. And kids who get in trouble in schools, they, the, the guidance counselors will say, well, look, we'll give you a pass on this if you'll do an extracurricular curricular activity and so many of the kids who signed up for her afternoon media class were kids who were in trouble 
and they were only doing it to get out of trouble. So how do I say this without sounding like an asshole? Uh, they were kids who had problems anyway. So she gets in there. There's a 15-year-old kid, Billy Flynn. He's got the mullet, you know, short in the hair, professional in the front, long in the back. Okay. At this point, she's 22. He's 15. Can you even imagine yourself being attracted to a 15-year-old boy? No. They're boys. They, they're bo Even an 18-year-old boy still looks like a boy. I don't get that. But she was. And she... I'm not going to say that she had planned Greg's murder out at that point when she started banging Billy. But she used her sexuality to her advantage. And as a woman, I don't have any problem with that. Use what you got. Good for you. But then she took it too far. And she had this boy, Billy Flynn, and two of his other friends come murder her husband. Okay. All these, all three guys are out. I started to do the research to give you the exact dates, and I thought most of you probably don't care. But the kid who supplied the gun and drove the car, he never went to the actual murder scene. His father turned him in. The story, go, of course, goes out to the police, and I don't know what weapon it was, but the police said, it's a 9 millimeter." And this dude, this father, went and looked and went, oh, shit, my 9 millimeter has gone. And he called police. And that was the first uh, hint to the police that someone's involved. I will tell you, my parents would also turn me in. And I got to tell you, if I knew that any of my children, my children, or my future stepchildren were committing a crime, I, I would do the same. I'm not going to protect you from the law. I'm sorry. I, I absolutely will not. There's a chick in New York right now who... Pushed A woman was hailing a cab, an older woman, 80s, late 80s, early 90s, still out in public, good for her. And this dumb bitch saw the woman hailing the cab and she pushed her over. And the woman fell, hit her head, and ended up dying five days later. And this girl now is in Rikers Island, where she should be. But she was an entitled brat. She had never been held accountable for anything. Her par Anytime she made a mistake, her parents got her out of it. Okay, well, they can't get her out of this one. She's fucked. Good. It's where she should be. Uh, but, so this father turned him, called and said, my 9 millimeter is missing. You may want to check this out. So they go to these three boys. Okay, two of the boys went into the house and actually committed the murder. Billy Flynn was the one that Pam was being naughty with, bumping uglies. <laughs> And Billy Flynn is the one who actually fired the shot. And from what he says, and Billy Flynn is out. He's He's been out for over a decade. And again, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't, I started to look it up and I gave it up. But he's out, he's married, and he has become a good member of society. Good for him. God bless you, Billy Flynn. I have a hard time with these kids uh, being sentenced to life without parole. You're 15, your brain is still developing but this kid she Pam used her pretty little vagina to get her way and anyway back to what I was saying so Billy is apparently standing there Greg smart the victim is on his knees and Billy's ordering him to do things and he says take the wedding ring off and Greg makes a comment that I can't lose my wedding ring or my wife will kill me can you imagine how Billy felt when Greg said that well, he's, Billy says that either he said it out loud or in his head. He said, God, forgive me. And he filed, fired the gun. So this is a kid who did something and it, it wasn't in his heart. You don't say, God, forgive me. Do you think Shelly Michael, right before she injected her husband with Rocky Rhodium, said, God, forgive me? Do you think Chris Watts, right before he put his hands around Shan Shannon, says, you're never going to see those kids again. God forgive me. And then he murders them? No. No. Because those are different kind of murderers. And I guess, here's me classifying murderers. This is a 15-year-old kid. And he had boobs in front of him. Boobies. Oh, my goodness. You're 15. You see boobies. 
that's a pretty big deal. And yeah, you'll, you'll, uh, anyway. Okay. There's Floyd. Hi, Floyd. Uh, so the police were suspicious immediately. The murder happened at nine o'clock at night. Right there, the police say, whoa, 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 whoa. Burglaries don't happen at nine o'clock at night because people are home. So right there, their, their little radar is on. You remember Jesse Smollett? The, uh, he was on some television show. He lived in Chicago. And he claimed to be attacked by MAGA supporters at 2 o'clock in the morning on a night that Chicago was having a polar vortex. It was negative 9 degrees. Okay, so all that happens, right? Because, you know, stalkers, it's negative 9. Oh, let's go out and find, see if we can find a MAGA supporter. But Jesse got back to, Jesse got back to his apartment with his Subway sandwich fully intact. And one of the responding officers says that was the very first thing that just sent a radar. Wait, wait, you were attacked in mug, but you came home and your sandwich is still perfectly folded in that little paper? That doesn't make sense. Same with her. So that night, you know, Pam's at a school board meeting, so her alibi is sure. She gets home at 9.30, and oh my goodness, her husband's dead in the foyer. And she runs to the neighbors. One of the neighbors calls 911 and says, I think this woman lives near me, uh, and we need help. Uh, to me, that's weird. I know my neighbors. We've talked about this before. You live in a townhouse. You're going to definitely know at least the two or three people on each side of you. And this woman wasn't sure Pam was her neighbor, but pretty sure. So, uh Pam tells the police that night, oh my goodness, it's very clear. This is a burglary. Okay, so the police right then, so, oh, radar, radar. Why does she already know what's going on? So they're suspicious of her from the beginning. Uh, but it gets worse. You ready for this? Her husband gets slaughtered at 9 o'clock at night. I think it was a Tuesday, but don't quote me. Wednesday afternoon, she calls her local... ABC or NBC affiliate, her local affiliate, and says, come do a story about this, please. So they're, they're not really suspicious yet. The reporter gets to her house, and she starts telling him things that she should do. She says, look, it's just a month shy of our one-year anniversary. How do you think, well, how do you think it would go if we pulled our, the top piece of our cake? our wedding cake out of the freezer to show that because you know it was I don't know if people even still do it anymore when you get married and you take the top layer you stick it in the freezer for a year and then you eat it on your one year anniversary my mother made wedding cakes professionally and she would take those cakes and if you had to pay something extra it was something like $35 and then one year later she would hand you a brand new top layer of your cake and so that's what my mom did. I don't even know if people still do that. But the reporter is sitting there thinking, what the fuck? This woman is producing her own episode? He was very, very uncomfortable right there. But so they move on. They produce the episode. Oh, he did say that when he, she opened the door, he couldn't believe her appearance. She was done up. Like, what's it called? The You're doing the nines. What's it called? Come on, you know what I'm. I mean, but she was all done up. <laughs> Remember, guys, it was the early 90s when your hair, you pluffed your hair up and sprayed it. You'd hold your comb with your hairspray like that, and then you would take your hair dryer and do that so that it would cake your hairspray. So if you're, you're ever looking at those pictures and you think, how did those chicks get their bangs up like that? That's how we did it. Sprayed hairspray and then the blow dryer, and then it, it all stayed up. You had the, the Jackie O look. Um, so they were suspicious with that right there again. What ends up happening? So the cops right away, they're like, okay, we think it's probably this chick. But we have to investigate. So now remember, the one, the one of the boys' dads has come to the cops. So they, the cops say, okay, let's look at the friend's circle. So they go to the friend's circle, and another... There was another person in this extracurricular media class. Her name was 
Oh my goodness. Celia? Sort of the C? I apologize, I don't remember it right this moment. But this was a 15-year-old girl who had a lot of problems. She was overweight. And teenagers are mean. We all know that. <laughs> they, they're mean. So I'm sure she was picked on for her weight. But she had become good friends with Pam. And the police pretty much said to her, look, we think you were involved. But if you can get her on tape, we're going to give you a pass. And so Celia, I think that was her name, puts a recorder in her. And remember, technology is different. This is 1990. You can hardly understand it. It's not like today. But Celia makes a comment, something about, if they ask me, I don't know what to say because I don't want to get you in trouble. And Pam pretty much just convicts herself. She's like, well, you know, if you tell them the truth, we're all going to jail. Okay, well, if you haven't committed a crime or done anything wrong, why would those words ever come across your lips? They wouldn't. Goodness. Okay. So, I don't remember if I said this at the very beginning, but Pam just had her last appeal. You know, appeals take three to 12 years. Uh, I don't remember my source. I bitched about Sherilyn Cato not telling her sources. I did Google it. How long does the average appeal take? Um, so this crime happened in 1990. It's now 2022, 32 years ago. She finally lost her last appeal. So that's how long the appeals take. Pamela Smart will die in prison. Here is my unpopular opinion. And if you're still watching, God bless you. Uh, I don't think she should. I'm sorry. I think she should be out. I, I don't care that she didn't pull the trigger. Billy Flynn pulled the trigger. She made Billy Flynn pull the trigger. Um, I'm just uncomfortable with it. The boys who committed the crime are all out. All three of them. You know, two boys went into the house, held the gun to his head. And the one boy sat in the car, provided the gun. They're all three out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with life without parole when you don't have direct evidence. I, I don't want the death penalty unless there's DNA linking. I think this chick should be out. I'd like to know your thoughts. If you're still watching right now, I'm shocked. Hit like, hit subscribe. God bless America.